Greetings. Welcome back to Black Bear News, where we are discussing climate change, abrupt climate change, and things adjacent. Hark, I hear a dog. Um, <clears throat> there's so many things to cover. I think I'm going to have to do <clears throat> a couple of videos tonight. Um, we'll see how this goes. Um, <clears throat> just going to jump into um, some weather news real quick. The mercury seems to be falling here in, um, in Southern California. We're expecting some storms uh, from this article, Parade of Storms to Bring Soaking Rain and, a feet, and Feet of Snow to California through the next week. Uh, the jet stream over the Pacific Ocean will remain active into the next week. Several storm systems will ride the jet stream into California. Multiple rounds of rain and mountain snow are likely. <clears throat> Excuse me. California will be under a siege of storm systems of the next week that will send rounds of soaking rain across the state and snow into the Sierra Nevada. Uh, the storms will be guided toward California through a strong jet stream over the Pacific Ocean. It's possible the Golden State could be effect, affected by three or four, excuse me, separate weather systems through the end of the week. Um, yeah, there's a large storm off the coast or several storms. <clears throat> and uh, this is from two days ago from Seattle. Pi.com. Huge storm offshore. Cliff Mass calls it a cyclone on January 9th, 2019. Huge storm offshore. University of Washington Atmospheric Sciences professor Cliff Mass tweeted at dinnertime <clears throat> Tuesday, headlining a blog that showed an enormous low presser pressure center spread over much of the Pacific Ocean. <clears throat> I just started my timer, so I have no idea how long this video is going to be. A huge, deep, mid-altitude cyclone is parked off our coast right now with very strong winds over uh, the Pacific and large easterly flow in the Columbia Gor uh, Gorge, the Strait of Juan de Fuca, and West Passes in the Cascades. Um, we're getting winds while the North Pacific, Pacific is getting enormous waves. A huge, slow-moving storm has strong winds, lots of fetch, plenty of time for the wind to work on the water. The storm has picked up vast amount, a vast amount of moisture. They will be getting buckets of rain. <clears throat> Oregon and California, Northern California especially, will be getting buckets of rain in the next two days. Uh, okay. Moving on, <clears throat> there's yet another storm. Uh, this is from today. Snow to blanket more than 1,500 miles from Denver to Washington this weekend. A winter storm is blanket blanketing Missouri and is expected to keep moving east this weekend. As of 7 p.m. Friday, the National Weather Service office in Weldon Spring, Missouri, reported about five inches of snow. Um, <clears throat> Jefferson County Sheriff Dave Marshak said on Twitter on Friday, there has been 50 accidents <clears throat> as of 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. The Missouri Department of Transportation on Twitter warned residents not to travel in the storm if it isn't necessary. The storm has caused 53 arriving and 39 departing flight cancellations at St. Louis Lambert International Airport with more expected into Saturday morning, the airport said on its website. Across the country's midsection, 50 million people are under a winter storm advisory watch or warning. Washington and Baltimore were added to the list of advisories. The storm will gear up across central Colorado, then move east across the plains. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so uh, finally seeing some winter action in what has been an unusually mild winter for for many, um, we'll keep an eye on those. I wanted to move to this story I've been trying to read. This is from uh, last year, July 9th, 2018. <clears throat> I've been trying to get into this story for days and it's just taken me a while. Uh, Phoenix tries to reverse its silent storm of heat deaths. I don't think I'm going to read this whole thing, but I'm going to just kind of um, 
give you the overview, there is a moment as heat stroke sets in when the body no longer able to cool itself stops sweating. Joey Azuela remembers it well. My body felt hot like in a different way. He said it was like a I'm cooking hot. Three summers ago, Azuelo, then 14, and his father were hiking a trail in one of Phoenix's rugged desert preserves. It was not an unusually hot day for Phoenix, and they had gotten a later start than usual. By the time they reached the top, Azuelo was weak and nauseous. They had run out of water. On the way down, it was just like a daze, and I just remember thinking, like, man, I got to get to the car, just get to the car, Azuelo said, then just black. Azuela collapsed in the parking lot. By the time the ambulance arrived, the asphalt had singed his arms and legs, causing second-degree burns. His mother, Alicia Andazola, arrived at the emergency room to find her son covered in ice. His body temperature was approaching 108 degrees. Doctors removed Azuela's blood with a machine to cool it. His organs started failing. We weren't sure for the first couple of days if he was going to make it. More than 155 people died from heat-related causes in the Phoenix area last year, a new record in a place where the number of such deaths has been on the rise. Former Phoenix Mayor Greg Stanton deemed it a public health crisis, and the city has launched an overhaul of how it prepares for and deals with extreme heat. Just as other places prepare for hurricanes, Phoenix aims to create a model program for coping with the temperature spikes and heat waves that scientists say are becoming more common across the country as the climate warms. That effort includes trying to actually lower the temperature of the city. Already, more people die from heat-related causes in the U.S. than from all other extreme weather events. And as with other disasters, the most vulnerable are the elderly, the sick, and the poor. Heat is like a silent storm, says Mark Hartman. Phoenix's uh, chief sustainability officer, our goal is to actually say, to be heat ready, uh, here are all the things you need to do. Deadly hot and getting hotter. Extreme heat is certainly not new for Phoenix. <clears throat> Many cities are taking steps to cope with higher temperatures, but Phoenix has the distinction of having more than 100 days a year that are above 100 degrees. Headlines of people succumbing to heat on trails and streets in cars and homes are a tragic staple of summer. And the problem is getting worse. Already the, scenic, the city the Phoenix has six more days above 110 degrees than it did in 1970. Although the all-time record of 122 degrees has held since 1990. I think they got really close to that many times in the last few years. And as elsewhere, nights are warming even faster than days. Hartman says nighttime low temperatures in the Phoenix area have gone up an average nine degrees in recent decades. <clears throat> um... Chronic exposure can kill. Communicating about the risks of Phoenix heat is challenging, says Rebecca Sunnenshine, who tracks heat-related deaths within the Maricopa County Department of Public Health. Heat-related deaths, uh, deaths peak during July, but begin as early as May and through September. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, you know, obviously we're going to see um, a lot of places having these kinds of problems, I'm sure, much sooner than we think. <clears throat> but Phoenix is one of those places, um, you know, in the, in, the, in the realm of the current economic paradigm, um, Phoenix is a place that people are, are trying to go to because, you know, so the economy is better there. It's cheaper living there. There seems to be more jobs there. You know, people find it an opportunity opportunistic place to go. However, <clears throat> um, that's going to run head up against the fact that it's just going to be physically very difficult to live there. And also factor in the fact that they have the only nuclear reactor, I believe, in the country. Um, I don't know if it's true about the globe, but that isn't near a body of water. The nuclear reactor is cooled by wastewater from Phoenix. So if Phoenix ever loses power or shuts down big problems big big problems anyways uh, moving on moving on to this article from cnn this is from yesterday the oceans are warming faster than scientists thought so this is a redux of <clears throat> another study just a few months ago that said basically the same thing the world's oceans are warming but then you know it was um there was a lot of uh 
um, controversy about the math involved in that other study. And, you know, uh, because I think they got a couple of numbers wrong, they were like, well, okay, you know, it's, they're still heating really fast, but maybe not as fast as we thought they were. And deniers just jumped all over it. Like, see, look, you're doing the math wrong. You guys don't know what you're doing. And the earth is not heating at all. It's just totally cooling, which is not what's happening. Um, that's not how you do it, guys. Uh, the world's oceans are warming at an accelerated rate and are much warmer than scientists thought. Things could get a lot worse if nothing is done to stop climate change, according to a new study. The data published in Thursday's edition of the journal Science, the Science Journal, shows that the oceans have experienced consistent changes since the late 1950s that hadn't, have gotten a lot warmer since the 1960s. <clears throat> the oceans are heating up much faster than scientists calculated in the UN assessment of climate change released in 2014. For the new study, scientists used data collected by a high-tech ocean observing system called Argo, an international network of more than 3,000 robotic floats that continuously measure the temperature and salinity of the water. Researchers used this data in combination with other historic temperature information and studies. The study authors say, the warming is happening because the climate change created by such human activities as the burning of fossil fuels. The ocean is the memory of climate change along with melted ice and 93% of the Earth's energy imbalance ends up in the ocean. Says study co-author Tevin Trenberth, part of the climate analysis section of the U.S. National Center for Atmospheric Research. Global warming is close to ocean warming. And 2018 will be the warmest year on record. Uh, followed by 2017 and then 2015. Though a warmer ocean might make more, for more a more pleasant swim, it carries deadly consequences. A warmer ocean causes sea level to rise, bringing problems like dangerous coastal flooding. It leads to the loss of sea ice, heating the waters even further. It can affect the jet stream, allowing cold Arctic air to reach farther south, making winters more intense and endanger the lives of animals that depend on sea ice like penguins and polar bears. <clears throat> a warmer ocean also contributes to increases in rainfall and leads to stronger and long-lasting storms like Hurricanes Florence and Harvey. The warming is convoluted with natural variability and one of the warmest spots was where Florence developed this past year and where Harvey developed this previous year, Trenberth said. The warm water fuels the evaporation and moisture for storms. That's just science. For every one degree Celsius increase in temperature, there's a 7% more, there is 7% more moisture in the air. Ocean temperatures around Florence trended 1.5 degrees warmer than normal, contributing to about 10% more moisture available in the atmosphere. We could see many more weather-related problems if the ocean continues, continues to warm at this accelerated pace, especially if there's no human intervention to manage climate change, experts say. Global warming is rearing its head, Trenberth said. If humans don't do anything to mitigate climate change, warming in the upper part of the ocean will be six times higher uh, by 2081 to 2100 than total ocean warming in the past 60 years. Uh, yeah. Not looking good. Uh, that's, all, that's all I'm going to read of that article. I'm going to link it below. And <clears throat> that actually segues into this <clears throat> article from The Guardian, Global Warming of Oceans Equivalent to an Atomic Bomb Per Second. From Monday, January 7th, 2019, seas absorb 90% of climate change's energy as new research reveals vast heating over the past 150 years. Uh, global warming has heated the oceans by the equivalent of one atomic bomb explosion per second for the past 150 years, according to analysis of new research. More than 90% of the heat trapped by humanity's greenhouse gas emissions has been absorbed by the seas. Just a few percent heating the air. That's just science. <laughs> um, I don't know <clears throat> how you can counter this uh, or say this is, it just isn't happening. Um, but people try. Try, they do. And fa they, fail, they will. Um, with just a few percent heating the air, land, and ice caps, respectively. So also, yes, if we took all the ocean heating out of the ocean and it was in the atmosphere, we would be something like 97 degrees hotter, <clears throat> which would totally be, uh, I mean, lifeless, if not close to lifeless. There would be 
most of everything on the earth would be uh, all gone. So what does this mean? Much of the heat has been stored in the ocean depths, but measurements here only began in recent decades and existing estimates of the total heat the oceans have absorbed stretch back only to about 1950. The new work extends that back to 1871. Scientists have said that the understand that understanding past ocean uh, changes changes in ocean heat was critical for predicting the future impact of climate change. Uh, a Guardian calculation found the average heating across the 150 year period was equivalent to about 1.5 Hiroshima sized atomic bombs per second. But the heating has accelerated over that time as carbon emissions have risen. And now the equivalent of between three and six atomic bombs per second. Whoa. <clears throat> I will try not to make this type of calculation simply because I find it worrisome, said Professor Laura uh, Larazana at the University of Oxford, who led the new research. We usually try to compare the heating to human energy use to make it less scary. Okay. Kid gloves, everybody. Obviously, we are putting a lot of excess energy into the climate system, and a lot of that ends up in the ocean. There is no doubt the total heat taken up by the oceans over the 100, past 150 years was about 1,000 times the annual energy use of the entire global population. Uh, not, not a good. Or, uh, yeah, non-good. Um, so lastly, yeah, um, I wanted to also link this website. <clears throat> it, you know, the, the, the deniers, some of the deniers that jump on this channel are just, just so, you know, rabid, <clears throat> um, rabidly, vociferously, just, you know, gnashing of teeth. No, it's all wrong and you're stupid. You know, like there's no... <clears throat> there's no, you know, uh, point at which you can kind of like reason or, you know, have a discussion because they're just blasting you with their wrong opinion. <clears throat> and it gets really difficult to be um, kind and understanding of those people. Uh, usually I have three levels, which is like, I joke around with them, like, no. <laughs> um, and then I'm like, okay, look, slow down or stop commenting you you know welcome to hang out hang around or may have some nice little chats with people and then they keep going and then i'm like then i just you know give them all the expletives and i block them and that's usually how it goes just because these people can't stop um uh usually i i feel like those are either people who are paid to disrupt the conversation or um they have some kind of you know disorder or something going on emotionally that which makes them incapable of um taking their emotions out of like you know what they're thinking and what they're doing anyways um in the in the process of you know talking with somebody about the last person who was on the channel uh going ham on everyone and uh, i finally had to block them but um where is this okay so they sent me this um, website, which at first I thought looked, you know, for just the, the URL made me think of it, it or made me think it was a denier site. It is not a denier site. Skeptical science getting skeptical about global warming skept skepticism. So this is a uh, website that debunks um, all the denier angles. And so I'm going to link this below. It's quite interesting. Uh, I'm going to keep this bookmarked, but basically it goes through what, you know, people are talking about, um, you know, the different, different arguments that uh, deniers bring up and they just basically try to counter that with facts and science. And so um, anyways, thank you, uh, Rolf, I believe sent me that or is involved with this website. It's quite interesting. I will link it. You guys can check it out. <clears throat> That's all I have for this uh, video, this episode. If you will, thank you so much for your eyes, your ears, and your conscience. If you would like to support this channel, you can do so at the links below. Until next time, peace.